Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve best time to buy and sell a stock with a cooldown. And this is actually a very interesting problem and a very challenging problem. But honestly, I'm going to make this problem look like a joke today. And that's not because I'm really smart. It's honestly only because I know how to draw a picture. I'm sure you guys know how much I like drawing pictures for leak code problems and how helpful they are. And this problem is a perfect example of why exactly that is. So let's get into it. We are given an array of prices. The price at index I just represents the price of a given stock on the ith day. And our goal is to maximize the profit that we can achieve. And the complicated part is that actually we can make as many transactions as we like. We can buy a stock and then sell a stock. But there are a couple restrictions. The main restriction here is that we can't buy a stock and then sell the stock on the next day. We have to have at least one day in between called the cooldown day. Now, we could have one cooldown day, but we could actually have multiple cooldown days if we really want to, right? Because we have a choice of how many transactions we can complete. And the other restriction here is that if we buy the stock, let's say on index zero, right, we buy it for price one, we can't just buy it the next day as well, right? We can't just have uh, infinitely many. We can only have one share at a time. Basically, that's what they're trying to get at, right? We can't buy and then buy and then buy. We have to buy and then sell and then rebuy. So in this example, uh, with this array of prices, the result happened to be three. Three is the max profit we could get, and these are the decisions we would make to result in the output three. We buy on the first day, we buy for one, we sell for two. That's a profit of one. So, so far we have a profit of one. We cool down on day three. So we cool down, we buy it for zero the next day and then sell it for two. So that's a profit of two. So the total profit was three. So not too bad, but the real uh, complicated part about this problem is that we have so many choices that we could make. And that can get really complicated unless, of course, you draw a picture. So let me show you how, with drawing a picture, we can solve this problem in linear time. So like I said, there's a lot of decisions to make, so let's try to draw out those decisions. The first main thing here is we can either buy or we can sell. And we can only sell if we have already bought the stock before. So when we start out at this array, right, we start at day zero. At this point, at the beginning of the array, are we buying or are we selling? Of course we're buying because we don't own the stock yet, so we can't sell it. So that's one part of the state that we have to kind of keep track of. Are we buying or are we selling? And it's not too hard because it's just a Boolean, right? It's true or false. And initially we're buying. So, you know, we have a choice at index one, right? We can buy. So of course, one decision is buy. If we buy the stock on day zero, it costs one. So if we do buy, what's our total profit so far? Well, buying costs money. So our total profit so far if we buy is gonna be negative one. Now, are there any other decisions we can make other than buying? Well, we definitely can't sell yet. We don't own anything, but we can definitely do a cool down. Now, if we do a cool down, then our profit is gonna be zero so far. And by the way, let me just draw a little zero up here because when we initially started, our profit was also zero. Okay, now on the left path of the decision tree, what choices can we make now? Can we also buy and do a cooldown? Well, we already bought. We can't buy again. We have to sell now. Technically, we don't have to sell, but that definitely is one of our choices. The other choice, of course, is cool down. So as you can kind of tell now, we always have a choice of cooling down, right? The, the main choice that we're going to be determining is are we buying or are we selling? The other choice can always be cool down. We don't have to do anything. But if we do sell on the second day, you can see on the second day, the price is two. So uh, by selling, we're basically doing a plus two operation, right? Initially, we had negative one. We're doing a plus two. So that means our total profit, if we sell so far, is going to be positive positive one. So that's pretty good. Now, of course, if we cool down, the profit is going to stay the same, meaning negative one. Now let's quickly draw the decisions on the right side of the tree. If we cool down, uh, then we can't sell because we haven't bought anything yet. So the same decisions uh, will be present as you know the original decisions, basically buying cool down over here. And the other decision is going to be buying. So here, if we buy we saw that initially we had zero as the total profit but if we buy on the second day that'll be a minus two operation so our total profit so far will be minus two if we cool down of course it'll just stay zero so now we get to a kind of interesting case 
Uh, after we have already sold, then what are our decisions? Can we buy and then also have a cool down? Well, the answer is no. And the reason is because remember, after selling, we are forced to have at least one cool down day right after selling. So basically just pretend like we skipped a day, right? We had a forced cool down day, right? That's our uh, one decision. And we, ha we can't make any other decisions here, right? This is our decision. We're forced to do a cool down after selling. But after doing that, uh, we know our profit is going to stay the exact same, plus one. After doing that, though, then we do have a choice of buying or having another cool down day. So we can buy or we can have another consecutive cool down day. If we have another cool down day, of course, our profit is going to stay the exact same, plus one. But if we buy, well, first, what day is it? It's the fourth day now. It's uh, the price is zero. So if we buy, it's going to cost us zero. I wish I could buy stocks for a zero price. But in this case, of course, if it costs zero, then our total profit is just going to stay the same. So we can stay at plus one. Now let's continue on this path. Last decision we can make is either selling or having another cool down day. Of course, if we sold, well, it, we're on the fifth day, the last day, it costs, the price is two. So we'll make a profit of plus two. We were already at plus one. So one plus two is gonna be three. That's gonna be our total profit. If we took this chain of decisions, right? If we bought, sold, had a cool down, then bought and sold again, this is what the profit would be. Of course, every path in this decision tree is gonna have a different number, right? For the total profit so far. And of course, we wanna return the maximum. Uh, and by the way, if we had the cool down day instead on the last day, then our profit would stay the same. It would be plus one as opposed to plus three. And just imagine that, you know, every leaf node of this tree has some different number. And among all of those, we want to return the maximum. So among these two decisions, between three and one, of course, the value we are going to return when we implement the solution recursively, the value we're going to return is going to be the plus three. We're just going to take the maximum of these two and return the max. So I really hope looking at this picture makes the solution understandable for you. The downside to this solution, though, is the time complexity. You can see that the height of the tree that we're making is going to be n, where n is the size of the prices array. And the number of decisions at every point we can make is up to two decisions. So the overall time complexity is going to be two to the power of n. But we can actually use a very simple dynamic programming technique called caching in this case. And by doing that, we can reduce the time complexity to big O of n. The reason why is because the key for the caching that I'm going to be doing is one going to be the index, right? The index of what position we're at in the prices array. The second uh, key I'm going to be using is a Boolean for buy or sell. I want to know if we're buying or are we selling. It's a binary decision. So we can just use a Boolean for that, right? If we take this key value, how many possible values could it be? Well, the index I, there's N different possible values for it. This uh, buy or sell state is going to be two different states for it because it's just a Boolean, right? So if we take N times two, uh, we basically get two times N, right? Which we know is just can reduce to big O of N. So in this case, if we use caching, the time complexity will be big O of n. The memory complexity will also be big O of n because we are caching. If you're not familiar with caching, I'll be explaining it right now as I go into the coding solution. Okay, so now let's write out the code. You can see I already wrote out a few things. One is just a comment kind of explaining what we're going to be doing. We're going to keep tracking of the state, uh, whether we're buying or we're selling. If we buy, we're just going to increment the index by one. If we sell, we're going to increment the index by two. Reason is because we remember we have to take a cool down day after we sell. And remember, we are going to be using caching, a dynamic programming technique. So the easiest way to do a cache is just use a hash map. So that's what I'm doing here with Python. And just a comment, what I'm going to be using as the key value of this hash map is going to be the index i that we're at in our prices array and a Boolean, which is called buying. It's going to be true if we're in a buying state and it's going to be false if we're in a selling state. And the value of the hash map is just going to be the max profit associated with this key value. So now let's get into it. I'm going to be writing out a recursive function, DFS. I'm going to be writing the function inside of our root function uh, because it's just easier that way. We don't have to pass in every single parameter. We don't have to pass in the prices array. We don't have to pass in our DP cache. We only have to pass in uh, our index and whether we're buying or we're selling. So 
First thing with recursive functions I like to do is just write out the base case. So we know that the main base case is gonna be if index goes out of bounds. So basically if index is greater than or equal to the length of the prices array, I didn't really cover this base case in the drawing explanation, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If we go out of bounds, basically if we have an empty array of prices, what are we gonna return? Well, we can't make any profit off of that, so we're gonna return zero. Okay, so that's great. And the other base case I just want to quickly mention is the case that if this pair of values, this I and buying pair has already been computed before. So basically, if this is in our DP hash map, initially our DP hash map is empty. But if this is in our DP hash map, then we assume that the max profit associated with this key has already been stored. So then we can return that, right? So in DP, we can just use this key value and then return whatever that max profit we stored was. Okay, so now for the actual decision that we can make. And remember, that decision that we make is going to depend on only one thing. What state are we in? Are we buying or are we selling? So it's a binary state, right? So if, else. So let's start with the buying. So we know in the buying state, we can do two things. We can buy or we can have a cool down day right? What's going to be the profit, the max profit associated with each of these? Well, if we buy, we're going to recursively call DFS at index I plus one. And what's the state going to be? Are we going to leave buying as the same? Of course not, because if we just bought, then we're in the opposite state. We're in the not buying state. So in Python, this will literally just take that Boolean value and negate it. Or in other languages, you could just do like the exclamation mark, but I'll leave this as is. So that's how the recursive call is going to work pretty straightforward. But the only thing is, if we bought, doesn't that affect our profit so far? Remember, that's what I was keeping track of. So if we bought, we have to subtract the price of what we just bought. We bought the index on day I. So that's what we have to subtract from the total. This will tell us what the max profit we can get from the remaining array starting at the not buying state. And this will tell us how much it actually cost us to get to this state in the first place. Similarly, we'll do the cooldown state, which is slightly easier because all we have to do is do I plus one. And in this case, the buying state actually stays the exact same because we did not buy. So we're, we're still in a buying state and we don't have to subtract anything because we didn't spend any money. And last but not least, don't forget to cache the result. So now we have our result. So I'm gonna use our key value, I and buying. And remember, we took two decisions. Among these two decisions, what do we wanna know? We wanna know which one created the max profit for us. So let's just take the max of buy and cool down and then assign that to DP. So this is where we are actually caching. So if we cache the solution and then we try to recompute that solution up above, then we're gonna end up returning it instantly rather than going through all the recursive calls over again. Okay, so that's really the bulk of the problem. Last thing we have to do is handle the sell case. So if we sell, then we're gonna do DFS. Uh, and remember, if we sell, we're actually going to increment the index by two because we have to take a cooldown day. And if we sell, we also have to negate the value of the Boolean. And, it, you know, you can do what's readable for you if you want to change this to, you know, set the buying state to true now. Uh, you know, whatever's readable for you. I prefer just setting it to the negation. Um, but instead of subtracting the price like we did with buying, we want to actually add the price because if we sold, that means we made some money. So we can set, you know, add the profit of this. Uh, notice I forgot the S up above. Um, and yeah, so that's one decision. And the other decision is just the cooldown decision, which we can literally just copy and paste from up above because a cooldown is just skipping the day and it'll be the same in both cases. And I'm going to copy the DP assignment up above because the only difference uh, if we sold is we're going to take the max of sell and the cooldown day. And if you want to save like one line of code here, you can probably just take one of the cooldown functions, uh, move it outside of the if else statement, and then delete the other cooldown, which I guess I'll do for you, but I don't think it's really that important. Uh, but yeah, once that's done, what do we want to return? We want to return whatever the max profit was. We luckily stored that in our DP, so we can just return uh, just like this. 
And believe it or not, that really is the entire function, but we don't have to, we don't want to forget to actually call that function. So let's call our DFS starting at index zero. And initially the buying state is true because we are buying when we start out. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works and it is pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.